Hi guys, I had just um, gone over my um, hardware implementation of my Z80 computer, so I wanted to do a video on the software. So this is um, what happens when you over the serial terminal when you first boot it up, it just prints out Z80 control by JB Langston, then you get a prompt. Um, you can type help here, you'll see a list of all the commands that it gives you. Um, one of the first things I guess I'll show you is Altmon. This is a um, monitor for the Z80 that I got from the Altair clone project. Um, I think it's maybe a, a modification of a monitor by Chromemco. Um, you can do the standard stuff like dump an area of memory um, you can, you can move, actually, I don't remember all the commands for this, so anyway, I just wanted to demo that it can run that. Um, I'm going to go back to my monitor now, and, um, so you can also do a dump directly from here. Um, this is actually running on the ABR. Um, and it's directly communicating with the memory. Uh, the previous thing that I showed you was running on the Z80. Um, I can, like, so the, the memory right now is kind of full of um, random junk since I just booted it up. So I'll fill the entire memory with zeros. I'll do a dump zero, and it does the first uh, 100 hex bytes. Um, so you can see everything has been cleared out now. Um, one of the other things that, um, some of the other commands that it can do, um, if you want to actually load a program, you can do load hex, and this loads um, Intel hex files off of the SD card. I've got a Hello World program on here called hello.hex. So I load that, it tells me, that it, it prints this out once for each line and it tells me um, the number of bytes total that it's loaded in. Now I can dump at 100, which is where it was loaded to. These are the instructions and over here you can see the actual Hello World ASCII that it's gonna print out. Um, so now if I wanted to run that, I can, um, do a run 100 and then now it's just cycling over and over again um, and just printing out hello world. Uh, in addition, I've implemented um, disk emulation for the Altair disk drive. So this allows me to run CPM. Um, I can run pretty much all the software that I could find from the SimH emulator project as well as the Altair clone um, project uh, without modification. These are the actual disk images that I just downloaded directly from their site and stuck on the SD card. So um, I can do a DIR and see what I've got on my SD card. Hello.hex is what I just ran. I've also, I've divided the disk images into the ones that I got from SimH and the ones that I got from the Altair uh, clone project because they use a different bootloader and it's not compatible. Um, the one bootloader isn't compatible with the other type of disk image. So if I do a DIR in SimH, um, I've got quite a bit actually, but uh, I will just attach to drive zero SimH slash CPM2.disk and then Whoops, sorry, the command is mount zero simh cpm2 disk. Um, and then uh, on the second drive, I can do there's some games. And then now the command, so this is dboot, this is used as the Altair disk bootloader. That's for the stuff that I got from the Altair. Uh, clone project. This is using Altair's actual unmodified bootloader. And then this one, sboot, is from the SimH project. So if I do sboot, 
Um, it takes a little while to read the file off of disk. Now I'll, um, CPM has come up, you can do a DIR. Here's all the stuff that's on this, um, on this disk that it's kind of the default CPM disk that they provide with this MH emulator. And I can do survey and this just shows me I've got the full 64K of RAM. I've got, um, it's all RAM. Uh, CPM's loaded up here. The BIOS is loaded here. Um, then the active IO ports. 10 and 11 are the serial IO ports um, compatible with the Altair serial card. Um, and then 8, 9, and 10, uh, or 8, 9, and A, hex are the um, the disk drive uh, ports so one of them is to check the status or select the active drive one of them is to issue a command or check the current sector and then the last one is to read or write the actual data byte um, so I did mount that second disk here um, I've got a bunch of games that I've installed. Um, so there's a, it's, a, it's in German, but it's kind of like a, a snake clone or a nibbles clone. Um, it doesn't actually move on its own, which is kind of weird, but um, haven't figured out if it's supposed to or if it's just the way it's programmed. Everything else seems to work okay, so I'm assuming that's the way that it's programmed. Um, it's not very challenging. <laughs> um, so I just canceled that. Control C. Um, let me go to uh, the backspace. is kind of weird. It doesn't actually erase the character. It just reprints the character that it erased. So now I'm back to... Um, be prompt and I could type a colon. Um, all that that I accidentally typed was erased. So here, um, let's see, ladder is a good one. This is kind of a Donkey Kong clone using um, a standard just uh, text mode, um, VT100 terminal control signals. So if I play the game, um, I'm the little P character. Whoop, I need to jump. I died. And let's try this again. Jump, jump. Whoa. I'm not very good at it. Anyway, that's how it works. Um, so that's, um, that's CPM running. Um, another, I'll show you one of the ones that uses the Altair clone disk images I'll use. I have to use their CPM disk image because the disk format's a little bit different. So I'll do DBL slash, uh, actually I'll do a DIR DBL, um, mount zero DBL slash CPM2B63K.disk. And then for B, I'll do DBL slash sort.disk. And then I'll do a deboot, which is using the disk bootloader from Altair. And now I'm using this um, this version of CPM. And then on the B drive, I've mounted the Zork disk, so I can actually run Zork. And there's a mailbox here, open mailbox. Is it leaflet, read leaflet. Zork is a game of adventure, daring, and low cunning, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it works. All right, I'm going to halt this again. I pressed the halt button on my um, breadboard. Now I'm back at my monitor. Um, one of the other things I can do uh, is I've implemented debugging. Um, so I can actually do watches and breaks. So if I just type watch without any parameters, it shows the current watch status. You can set up a separate watch for memory reads, memory writes, IO reads, IO writes, opcode fetches. Um, and for each of these, you can specify a starting and an ending address. So I'm just going to do watch op fetch. 
and that's going to do without a parameter it's going to do the whole thing so if I say watch again it shows that I've got from 0 to FFFF alright now I'm going to reload the hello dot hex and then I'm actually let me clear the memory first because I have that CPM stuff in there um, all right so now everything's no ops I'm going to reload the hex uh, just double check my watches I've got op fetch on all right so now I'm going to reset the program counter to 100 which is hello, where hello world loaded and then I'm going to debug so that is the debugger it actually clocks the CPU around two kilohertz or so and it prints out each opcode fetch this is the address and this is the data byte the opcode byte and then I've um, actually done sort of a rudimentary disassembler here where it prints out what that particular opcode is now it doesn't actually yet decode the um, the parameters so this is just sort of a placeholder um, but you can see C3 is the opcode for jump um, and then actually after that it's got a jump to 100 so the next byte it reads is 100 and that's 31 so it's loading the stack pointer it's loading HL it's calling a function and so basically what's happening here is I've got a function that iterates through the string and prints out each character of the string by calling another function that outputs a character to the serial port so this is the call to the function that iterates through the string and then this is the call for the first character um, so here it's checking to see if the um, serial port is ready to receive a character it waits until that's true and then it outputs the character here it returns I increment the pointer in the string um, and then I go back to the beginning of that loop I load another character uh, I check if it's zero if so I return if not I call an output for another character it does that over and over and over again um, and you can see the actual um, output here um, is intermingled with the debugging information so there's the H there's the E there's the L and you can see it's right after the output command um, O space W O R L D and then there's the new line and then here I actually have a return which I probably shouldn't have done um, I should have made that a halt but since there's nothing on the stack it actually just continues running um, to whatever happened to be on the stack and um, since I filled the memory with no ops it's actually just going to continue cycling through the memory and it'll eventually get back around to zero and then jump to 100 and execute the hello world program over again so when you saw when I ran it the first time like if I just do a run 100 um, and it just runs over and over again that's actually because it's looping through the entire memory not because I've actually told the program the hello world to run multiple times so I'll fix that but um, that's how it works for now um, so we'll do help again um, you can also do a breakpoint so I can do let's see where about that hello world starts so this is 110 this is 120 119 118 so I'll do a break on a mem read from 118 to 120 so that's 130 129 or 12f e d c b um 12b all right so now you can see my breakpoints are set for memory read if I do 
a debug. Actually, let me reset to 100 and then debug. So you can see that it started to run the program and then it's doing this load, which is the first character in the string. And I actually set the breakpoint here for all the characters in the string. So every time it reads that memory containing the string, it breaks and it goes back to, um, to the monitor. Uh, if I type debug again, it's going to continue running. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Well, it was not a, a proper demo unless something went wrong. But anyway, the idea is that the break happens. You should be able to continue running um, or continue debugging, and then it should stop again. But apparently, there's a bug there. Um, but you get the idea. Um, I could also, let me do watch again. Let me disable the watch for opcode fetches. Um, let me disable the breakpoint and then let me add a watch for IO writes and I'll just do for any IO write. Um, now I have the whole thing um, 0 to 255 uh, whole IO space. Now if I reset to 100 and debug again so here you can see, again, it's looping around the entire memory space, but here's the IO um, write. It's writing a 68, which is H, and then you can see as soon as that gets written, the H actually appears here. Then you see the IO for the E, you see the E, L, L, blah, blah, blah. Um, let me see. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show for this demo. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see the list of commands here. Um, you have the debugging functionality, you have DIR, you have fill, dump, the standard monitor stuff. Um, so um, that's, that's where it is right now. I'm hoping to obviously fix some bugs here. And on the hardware side, I want to make this into a module for the RC 2014 um, sort of kit computer. I just ordered the kit yesterday and it's got a ship from England so I won't have it for a week or two but um, they took a different approach with that where it's actually more like a traditional Z80 computer. It's got the the processor, the memory, the ROM, a separate serial IO chip, um, so, and, and uh, they're using compact flash for the disk. So I ordered all of that and I'll have the basic um, sort of old school functionality there, but um, I still feel like the, the program that I wrote has a lot of value because it has the debugging functions. You can actually watch the opcode fetches, the IO, the memory reads in real time. Um, you, it has support for, um, you know, out of the box Altair software that you can just download a disk image from the SimH website. Um, so um, I'm planning on actually creating a little board for the um, for the RC14 that has the Atmega and the IO expander and the flip flop on it. And so that can actually replace the clock board, it can replace the serial IO board, it can replace the compact flash board and the ROM board. So really all you'll need at that point is the RAM board, the CPU board and my board and it'll be a fully functional computer. So um, that's kind of the idea where I'm headed right now. Um, We'll see how it works out. Hope to do some more videos and share with you once I've got uh, a little further along in the project. Take care.